back, just you two. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the works of mercy. So some of you have probably heard about it. Um, the two types of works of mercy, especially if you go to Catholic school. Um, but last week, Whitney talked about what mercy means and misery words. We talked a lot about that in small group. Um, but this week we're going to talk about how we actually can show mercy. And so actually, the Catechism of the Catholic Church gives us a lot of examples of this. So if you have your note sheet, you can follow along with this paragraph, but it's paragraph 240, wait, 2447, um, and it's about the works of mercy. So it says, the works of mercy are charitable actions by which we come to the aid of our neighbor in his spiritual and bodily necessities. Instructing, advising, consoling, comforting are spiritual works of mercy, as are forgiving and bearing wrongs patiently. The corporal works of mercy consist especially in feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and imprisoned, and burying the dead. Among all of these, giving alms to the poor is one of the chief witnesses of fraternal charity. It is also a work of justice pleasing to God. So, it's a long paragraph, but it basically lists out the works of mercy, which are also listed on your notes if you want to again, follow along. Um, but each of these works of mercy are scriptural based, so um, I also listed the scripture references on that note sheet, and they're essentially practical tips for how to act as Christ in the world. So if you didn't catch it, we have the spiritual works of mercy, which is what it sounds like. It's a way to help care for another soul and spirit. Um, and then we have corporal, which um, means bodily. So it's dealing with like physical needs on earth. So um, I'm going to run through these lists again, just in a more basic way so we can understand them. Um, so most of the corporal works of mercy come from Matthew chapter 25, um, and I listed that out, but they are feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, visit the imprisoned, visit the sick, and then bury the dead. And bury the dead, that one actually is cited back to the book of Tobit in the Old Testament. And then the spiritual works of mercy are instruct the ignorant, counsel the doubtful, admonish the sinner, bear wrongs patiently, comfort the afflicted, forgive wrongs willingly, and pray for the living and the dead. Um, and those scripture passages are listed next to them. But as the Catechism says, and I already mentioned this, the spiritual works of mercy care for another soul, and this is bringing them, and ultimately you, because you are like in contact with God when you are doing these um, actions, closer to the Lord. And then on the other hand, the corporal works of mercy are concerned with our earthly bodies, but they also help bring people closer to God because the care that you show them and the love shared through the corporal works of mercy are a window to God's love. That's like how we experience them in relationship, right? So through the works of mercy, we show those that we're serving their dignity. And often like the people that we're serving through these actions are people that like have been cast aside by society and told that they don't have dignity. Um, so an example of someone showing me a work of mercy, um, it was a corporal work of mercy, and I'm going to paint a picture for you because you have probably not had an experience similar to this yet because you're all in high school, but someday you might. Um, so it was summer 2020. I was um, after my junior year of college, and so COVID is still new, um, and we hadn't really started even wearing masks yet, like it's the beginning of COVID. And I had an internship with a company in Dallas and they offered me to still let me come in person even though like all of their employees were working from home. But I was like, that's lit. I'm not trying to live with my parents and work from the computer the whole summer. So I was ready. Like I was ready to go to Dallas. Um, which is weird because I had never been to Dallas. I didn't know one person in Dallas and we're in the middle of a global pandemic, which we all talk about as if it's normal, but prior to COVID, like that doesn't exist, you know? So like it was crazy. For some reason, I thought that would be better than working from my parents' house. Anyways, three weeks after I moved, a video went viral of a white police officer killing a black man, George Floyd, if you remember. Um, and so then the riots began. And so the buildings all around the downtown office I lived in, I mean, worked in, um, had their bottom floor windows knocked out, like they were completely boarded up. Um, we were under an 8 p.m. curfew. And you know, I still don't know anyone in the city. It's like pretty dead. People are, yeah, I've been working from home, staying pretty quarantined. Um, so I was feeling pretty 
pretty scared and alone, to say the least. And a lot longer story short, short um, I wound up reaching out to a girl I knew from college whose family was from near Dallas just to ask for a place to stay for a few days while I figured out like a new place to live. Because I was living really close to downtown, I was not really safe, I was alone. Um, and they wound up like offering for me to stay at their house for free for the next two months, which was like a huge unexpected blessing and it was extremely um, humbling. And it also was such a godsend because like, rent in Dallas is very expensive. So all that to say, they literally sheltered the homeless. Like, I mean, I had a roof over my head every night, but like I was in between places, you know? So they gave me a home. Um, they also comforted the afflicted. So that right there is a spiritual work of mercy as well um, with their kindness and generosity. And it's like not something I ever would have asked for, but God just gave it to me. Um, so yeah, like I said, extremely humbling. It took me a while to fathom, like even being the victim of that type of giving, because I had never met them before. They didn't know me. Um, I couldn't have done anything to deserve that. So anyway, as I'm listing these works of mercy, I can imagine some of you are thinking about ways you've like served in the past with your families, or even like gotten service hours for like National Honor Society at your school. Um, and these are really good things. But a crucial part of like a personal work of mercy is actually the motivation behind it um, or the intention. So in the works of mercy, the motivation is fueled by like acknowledgement of another person's dignity. Uh, it's ideally not like to get service hours or to like boost your resume, although like that could be a benefit, right? Like you don't have to leave stuff off. But like the, the motivation, the primary motivation behind it should be to like show another person that they have worth. Um, and of course, like God knows we're not perfect, so like we don't always have perfectly pure intentions, but that was the ideal. Um, an important thing to note as well is like these things stretch us. They don't sound easy. I mean, maybe some people are more prone to some than others, um, but they require us to detach from our most prized possessions, money, you have it, especially if you have a job. Um, food sometimes, our phones usually, if we're trying to give someone our attention, um, maybe even clothes, and yeah, time. I didn't already say that. Oh, that's a phone. I thought that was a mic. So, some of these examples you might do, like some of the things that I listed, you might do without even notice, noticing them. Um, and that is awesome. Like you do first mercy without even realizing it's second nature. So my challenge for you, if that's you, um, how can you make that like a little more intentional, just like acknowledging the spiritual aspect? And if you don't do any of these things, even like praying for others, this is a good time to start. You're in confirmation class, you've got what, seven more months. Um, this is a really great time for you to start like praying for each other. You, I mean, at this point have met few people in this room at least, um, and you're all going through this journey together. This is a great time for you to learn to pray for each other. Um, but I also have not always practiced the works of mercy. I don't always practice the works of mercy. And so again, like I want to emphasize that like God knows us and he sees us and he sees our intention. Um, so over the years, I realized that service was a massive part of the spiritual life because it is. Um, and often it was missing from mine. So like, until I moved to North Carolina, like service was like just really not at all at the forefront of my mind. It wasn't convenient, and you know I was like I pray, seems good enough. Um, but I had read a book a while back about injustice in the prison system, and like it was pretty convicting to me. And like there was no opportunity to like get involved in prison ministry anywhere anywhere where I lived um, in college. So I moved up here, and one of the chaplains at NC State was getting involved with the prison ministry at the women's prison. And I was like, great. He got plugged in through some women who had been going like every Monday for 20 plus years. And I was like, I can see what's up without feeling like, oh, I'm walking here by myself. Like, I don't know what to do. Um, so it helped to know that there would be some structure. But anyway, I like got certified, and like I've gone a couple times. Um, but every Monday, a group of Christian women who were imprisoned at the uh, women's prison gather with a couple of Catholic leaders from the area 
and read scripture, share stories, and then those who are Catholic receive the Eucharist. So somebody brings um, some hosts every week, which is awesome because they don't have mass. Like they have no access to Jesus there um, physically. I mean, they obviously have access to Jesus spiritually. Um, and then once in a while, we're joined by a priest from the area who gives confessions or like gives blessings and those sorts of things. Um, we can't celebrate mass because they're not allowed to bring wine onto the campus. So we have to bring hosts that have already been consecrated. So anyway, on my first visit, God really transformed my view of what this experience would be. I thought when I signed up, oh, this would be great. I'll bring some hope to the women who live here, and like society's cast them aside. And like that's a good intention, but it shows that my faith was like pretty small and pretty like reliant on my own capabilities. It's not like let's see what God's gonna do. It's like let's see what Gloria's gonna do. Um, never did I expect that my heart was gonna go into change because these women have like enormous faith. And um, they live in a pretty dark place. Like, they'll tell stories of, like, some of the things going on. And it's, like, they have learned to rely on God. And, like, that is, like, they're living in prison. You know, so I gain more the handful of times I've gone um, than I think I have any to offer them at all. So all of that to say, um, even if we don't have perfect intentions with our service, God can still multiply the fruit immensely. And it's often in ways we don't expect at all. So to close, I want to acknowledge that like some of these things seem pretty impossible because like, well, first of all, most of you aren't like 18 or 25, which like those can be age uh, like restrictions for helping at a homeless shelter or a prison or something like that. Um, but things that you can do are like keep water and granola bars in your backpack to share with those who are hungry, or like volunteer with vacation Bible school. Um, or even just setting a good example for like your younger teammates or siblings, which hopefully you do. I didn't always do that, but I should have. Um, you can write letters to those in the hospital or those who are homebound, and especially loved ones, like family members, even that, like if you're already visiting like a sick relative, like that is a work of mercy. Um, you can go to a seminary, I mean seminary. You could go to a seminary, I guess, but you can go to a cemetery and pray for the repose of the souls and like pick up trash around there. But when you can like forego a coffee on your way to school or drop that six dollars in the pool box. Um, some of these examples seem really small, even though they can sometimes feel really hard to do. Um, but because we're weak. But God sees our littleness and he actually loves it. So these are not things that we do to flaunt, even like even the smallest things, and especially when they go unnoticed, like those are so close to God's heart. Like he sees us fully. Um, so even those works of mercy that people don't recognize, like he sees them and it means that much more to him. So finally, um, later you will be challenged to make a like a little task card and create a plan for doing a work of mercy over the next week. Um, so this is a great opportunity to tap into a, an often forgotten area of our spiritual lives. Um, you don't have to choose something dramatic, but use this activity to reflect on ways that the works of mercy can fit into your daily or weekly lives. The Lord will use us in this world if allow him to. So he just needs our yes. That's all I have.